The city of Hamburg is one of the most important cities in Germany, both economically and symbolically. Hamburg is home to Germany's biggest dockyard, with a large amount of trade flowing in and out of the city, making it one of the richest cities in the German nation. Apart from being an important economic hub for Germany, Hamburg is also known for being one of Germany's leftist bastions, with many leftist movements and even Antifa having a lot of supporters and influence in the city. This also led to Hamburg being one of the most multicultural and international cities in Germany, with conservatism steadily loosening its grip on the city. The most famous thing coming out of Hamburg would be the football club called St. Pauli, and anyone who has gone to Hamburg is strongly aware of the presence of this club. Now, the football club is mediocre itself in terms of performance, but strangely enough, this has not stopped the club from gaining a very determined and loyal fanbase. Saying that St. Pauli simply has a devout fanbase is an understatement. What makes St. Pauli unique is the fact that it has a cult-like following, and if you ever visit Hamburg, you will definitely feel the cult-like atmosphere of this club. With St. Pauli stickers being scattered everywhere around the city, and a large number of homes flying the St. Pauli flag. As I mentioned, the club's performance is mediocre at best, so what's up with this whole cult-like following of it? The reason for that is because the club was drastically politicized by the far-left presence in the city, turning it from a standard football club to their own leftist brand, establishing almost complete control over it. I will be exploring the origins of this football club, as well as how it got politicized to such a massive degree, and what the far-left's true goals are with this club. Before we continue with the video, I have two announcements to make. Some of you may have noticed that the channel icon has changed and that the name is now Lavender instead of Lavwolf. The reason for that is, when this channel was first created, it was originally planned for me to run it together with my friend Wolfgang. Wolfgang was present in three videos on the channel, but due to him being busy most of the time, he has not found time to be part of the channel. I have talked with him about this, and we came to the conclusion that Wolfgang will not be able to be present as we originally planned, and for that reason, I am officially personalizing the channel, turning it into Lavender. And for the second point, thanks to the sudden boom in popularity my channel experienced, I have officially decided to open up the Lavender Discord server. If you would like to come over and have a chat with me and hang out with other people, the link will be in the description down below. Hope to see you there. And now, let's get back to the topic of the video. St. Pauli was not always a left-leaning football club. Its creation predates the rise of modern-day German leftist views. The history of the football club does not begin in 1910 as their logo would want you to believe. Its origins are linked to the St. Pauli Gymnastics Club formed all the way back in 1862. In 1910, the club joined the North German Football Association and would officially become a football club in 1924, splitting off from the Gymnastics Club. In 1931, St. Pauli qualified for the North German Championship for the very first time, but was defeated in the 16th round by the Lübeck team from Schleswig-Holstein. The club would continue to only make it as far as the North Regional League, only managing to enter the Federal League later on. There is no special history of the club, rather a standard one for any football club, but now let's finally talk about how the far left assumed control over it. It was around the 1980s when St. Pauli's transition from a standard traditional football club into a cult began. This time was notorious for Europe because of widespread far-right football hooliganism across the continent, and Hamburg was no exception to this. St. Pauli's longtime rival, Hamburger SV, had plenty right-wing and even fascist supporters among their fans. Socialists in Hamburg reacted strongly to this right-wing hooliganism, especially the amount of right-wingers among the Hamburger SV fans. So, as a means to combat them, the left looked towards their rival, which was St. Pauli, and decided to support them. 
In 1981, Sao Paulo had an average crowd of around 1,600 watching their games, but by 1988, that number had risen to well over 20,000. The left in Hamburg easily managed to quote-unquote take over the fanbase of the club, and thanks to their high numbers, St. Pauli was the first club in Germany to ban any sort of right-wing activities and displays in their stadium. Over time, the number of right-wing supporters among the Hamburger SV started to drop, and today, the club, while still having a small amount of right-wing ultras, does not have as many right-wing supporters as in the 80s. Thanks to the effort of the left in Hamburg, the war on right-wing football hooliganism seems to have been won in Hamburg. Despite this victory over the right, the left decided to not abandon St. Pauli, seeing how they managed to pretty much take over the fanbase and ban right-wing activities, all of this smelled like potential, something the left could use to, perhaps, completely change left-wing activism in the city. Slowly but surely, St. Pauli started becoming the left's cash cow in Hamburg. Another thing St. Pauli fans are known for is the social activism, funding things like pro-choice movements and pride parades. Their main way of financing these movements and organizations is, of course, through St. Pauli. One of the ways they earn money is from selling merchandise, with numerous St. Pauli shops scattered across the city. Some of the merchandise they sell are shirts and hoodies, which have symbols of Antifa and communist figure Che Guevara on them. It's also not uncommon to see these symbols among St. Pauli fans during a game. In my personal opinion, I don't believe that St. Pauli fans truly care about football. Rather, the thing they care about the most is using St. Pauli as the cash cow that it is in order to fund their activism and activities. And by keeping the club around and afloat as much as possible, the money will keep on rolling in. This is the reason why St. Pauli has this cult-like following in Hamburg. Not because of football or the club itself, but rather what St. Pauli represents for left-wing activism in the city. And seeing how they kept control over the club for over 30 years, it does not seem like it will lose popularity anytime soon. In my personal opinion, I don't think football clubs should be politicized, especially in such a massive degree like St. Pauli is. Of course, I am not saying that we should all shut down their fan clubs and ban merchandise, but instead, what I am trying to say is, football clubs shouldn't be used to represent a political idea or ideology, no matter whether right-wing or left-wing. Instead, they should represent the region and the nation itself. When Germany is playing in the FIFA World Cup, you see Germans of all sorts of religious and political beliefs putting their differences aside and cheering for the team that is representing their nation as a symbol of national unity instead of being divided on political issues. And that, I think, is what football teams, whether on a city or a national level, should be about. To be above politics and bring unity in their community when they are competing against a guest team. In that exact moment, it doesn't matter whether you are a communist, monarchist, anarchist or reactionary. You are all there cheering for the team that is representing your community. And that is what sports need to be to a true fan.